Hello everyone and welcome to this new video on combining multiple binaries from a folder into a single file. We're going to continue with the previous video where we showcase how we can use Power BI or Power Query functions and parameters in Power BI Desktop and Excel. And we're going to go with what Microsoft has created for us, which is a really uh, user-friendly uh, guided way to combine uh, multiple binaries or multiple files. So the first step is to go to get data and you're going to go to a folder. So we're going to connect to a folder where I have all of the files that I've showcased before, which is basically just all of the monthly reports that I have, uh, sales monthly reports. And we're going to go and connect to those and let's go ahead and, and get to those. And once we actually have those, uh, we're going to go ahead and try to combine them. So first step, just go to folder, grab the folder pad, hit OK, and you're going to get this window. Now in this window, you already have uh, a combine button, but I wouldn't recommend going straight forward unless you're certain that the files that you have in that folder are the only ones that are going to be combined. If you have some other files in there, then probably you want to go to edit and filter those out so you don't end up with errors. So just housekeeping here. So you probably want to uh, filter by extension. So you only, uh, let's say that you only want to filter the ones that start with XLSX. So XLS or XLSX is completely up to you. I'm going to choose to start with XLS. There we go. And maybe uh, I have some files here that I don't want to uh, fill that, that I don't want to take in consideration. So perhaps you want to filter those out from here. Once you have uh, the filters in place and you know that nothing's going to go through that, you're not going to end up with some files that you don't want to combine. Then you can click here on the combine files button. So go ahead and click here and you're going to notice that you're going to get a new window and this is going to be the combine files window. So the first thing that you need to choose is what is going to be your example file. So in our case, uh, with the newest version of Power BI desktop, you're going to get the first file, uh, before that, uh, starting from the November release, November 2016, uh, you only were able to select uh, one of the files that you actually had in the folder. So uh, if you want to just dynamically refer to the first file that it finds on the folder, you can do so here, first file, or you can hard code to always refer to one specific file. So in our case, let's go to just the first file that it finds. And I noticed that this is the file, so it connects to uh, January. Uh, this is just January in Spanish. So I'm going to just click here. OK. And that's going to create a lot of stuff, but don't be uh, scared of those. Uh, those are just helper uh, functions and helper uh, queries. So you can actually uh, get everything done. We have showcased how Power Query, the Power Query team or the Power BI team uh, actually created this uh, and why and how we can actually accomplish that manually, but they have done this automatically. So it can actually save us a lot of time. So in our case, we have the sample file, which is the binary. As you remember, it actually then dynamically picks up only the first file that it finds. And then we have the parameter that is basically that binary file as you remember. And then we have the sample query, which is this one. And then the function that is created from the sample query. So from here, I can remember, just do the uh, fill down. I'm just going to right click, fill down. I'm going to select this two and just pivot other columns. Rename this one to be month. I'm going to change this one to be product name. The next one is going to be territory. And the last one is going to be sales, just like that. I'm just going to now change the data types. So this is going to be a decimal number. 
and the rest are going to be just text. So I'm just going to select text here and there we go. So month, product name, territory and sales. And if we go to the formula bar of the function, I notice that it also changed uh, the form of the function. Uh, so it added the change type. Before it was just uh, the promoted uh, headers. So if I go to the to the actual output, which is going to be this one, I notice that hey, it's giving me an error. If I go to this specific step in bulk custom function, I notice that it's giving me the same error that we showcased in the previous video, where I have the table here and then errors. And the reason why we're getting errors is because it's trying to access a sheet name by the name of uh, January or, or 01 January in Spanish, of course. And that spreadsheet or that sheet doesn't exist in that workbook. So we need to change that from the sam sorry, from the transform sample file, which is the sample query, which is this one. And instead of navigating to that specific item, that object, that spreadsheet by the name of 01 Enero or January, we need to delete that one. And we want to make sure that we only get, again, sheets. So it only starts with sheets. So the kind or type of object that we're going to get is sheet. And we don't want this that it doesn't begin with the English version of, well, sheet. And then it doesn't begin with the Spanish version of sheet. So there we go. And last but not least, what we can do is simply the keep the rows so we always get only one row of data. So just the first table that it finds. And then we just expand this. Well, before we expand this, let's just go ahead and remove other columns. There we go. Hit OK so we can actually expand this data. It's inserting a new step. And the rest of the steps are actually correct. It promotes the headers, it fills down the month column, it unpivot other columns, then rename those columns, and last, it actually uh, change the data types of those columns. So now it opens the binary. Yeah, that's the first step that it does. It reads each file as an Excel workbook. Then it gets the data from the first sheet that it finds after a, a certain amount of filters that we actually applied. Then we expand that data from that specific sheet and we have it here. Then we promote the headers, fill down the month column, unpivot, rename the columns and change the data type. If we go back to output, I'm gonna notice that, hey, there are still some issues with this, and these are mainly because of the month uh, of this last step. Because in in the actual code that we have here, it says that uh, the month column, it, it was called before uh, mess, which is just translated from month, uh, the translation of month to from Spanish to English, or English to Spanish. So, it's saying that we need to change the data type of this one to something else, but that name of that column doesn't exist. So I can just delete this change step, change type step, and I have it now. I have the month, I have the product name, territory, and sales. And if I go to source name, I have the January, February, March, April, May, and June data. Just like that. One thing that, that it's funny about using functions this way it, is that I actually define the data types on here, but when you invoke those functions and put it into another context, basically you expand it, uh, it loses the data types. And what you need to do is basically redefine those data types. Uh, and basically here, I'm just gonna select those columns, text, and last one, least. 
the decimal number. If I want it, again, I'm just going to showcase this. You can go to this one. You can say, hey, just give me, you know what? Give me like the bottom, give me the bottom rows, like the bottom five. And when I go back to the output, you're going to notice that each month only gives me five rows, the last five. So everything that I do here is going to be translated to this function. And this function will be applied to each of the files that I have on this query, on this folder that I have. So that's the really nice part about this. And if you want to know more about how everything uh, actually comes together, how Power, the Power Query or the Power BI team created this uh, connection, this workflow, then I recommend that you actually watch the video on the bottom right. So go ahead and click on that video if you want to know more. And that's it for the video. Thank you.